Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Now, artificial intelligence, is it our new best friend or worst enemy? In Kuwait, AI bots have started reading the news, which means journalists could be out of a job, including you, Rosanna. I don't think so. <laughs> I really, really, is that what's going to replace us newsreaders and presenters? I'd like to see them moderate a Brexit debate. But of course, this is a more serious topic. It, 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 that was an AI bot speaking, the words written by our producer, Kieran. Very smart there, Kieran. But it does raise this important question. Is AI a threat to the jobs of almost all of us? Everyone from doctors to teachers could see themselves made redundant by a new technology that's faster and more intelligent than the average human. But will all of it result in this dystopian future where we'll be slaves to AI overlords or a more utopian world, freeing us from the shackles of nine to five, living free to pursue more leisurely activities? Here to discuss all of this, AI skeptic and director of the Future of Humanity Institute at Oxford University, Professor Nick Bostrom. Nick, thank you ever so much for making time to speak to us. And, you know, I know we can oversimplify this and talk about sort of robots taking our jobs. It seems to be that's what the media most grasps onto. But uh, give us a sense of the power of AI, if you could. Well, I think we are just at the early stages of what might become the biggest transition in, in human history, the arrival of the machine intelligence era. Um, long ago, we had sort of automated a lot of human physical labor, um, first through draft animals and then with steam engines and so forth. And, and now we are starting to automate human cognitive labor. Um, how, I think da how, are, dangerous, how dangerous yeah. is that to replicate cognitive behavior? Well, I've, I've long argued that this development of machine general intelligence, and as I think shortly thereafter, machine super intelligence, will be associated with significant existential risks, like threats to the very survival of the human species. Um, also, however, I think if we get it right, uh, it presents tremendous opportunities to, to solve, you know, a very wide range of different problems that have plagued humanity uh, throughout our history. You have argued that sentient machines are a greater threat than climate change at some point. Do you stick by that? Yeah, that's that's my assessment. Um, I think um, both in terms of time scale, um, there's a lot of uncertainty about that. But in the last several years, progress in AI has been really quite impressive. Um, and also about the risks, if and when we do reach human equivalence and then super intelligence, um, it's just something completely unprecedented. We've never developed super intelligences before, and uh, I think we might only get one try on this. We need we need to get it right on the first shot. Because um, once you have an unfriendly antagonistic superintelligence, it, it might not be possible to sort of put that genie back into the bottle. Um, so, so we, we, we got to get it right for at, at the first try. And it, and it looks quite challenging to do that, just to make sure that it's aligned and does what we actually want to do. I mean, it, is, it does sound terrifying, this idea of superintelligence. I've seen it described as godlike superintelligence. And I remember having beers with a friend a few years ago, and he was saying, the thing I'm most scared about is supercomputers. And I thought he was off his rocker. This was probably about seven years ago. He was right well, back nice. then. How, how far along the curve are we? And how fast is the train going in terms of being able to rein it in if we need to? The trade is going really fast. I mean, everybody has seen these recent um, large language models with ChatGPT for it seems like almost every other day there is like a big new release. Um, the image generation models, like everything you see in this picture is artificial, right? The virtual backdrop actually generated by one of these uh, DALI 2 image generation models. I I'm not even sure whether I'm real or artificial. Um, and it looks like these current algorithms generalize very well and scale. So you pour in more compute, you pour in more data, and, and they just seem to reach higher levels of performance with, as yet, no clear end in sight. Um, 
Uh, there, uh, there was an open letter being spread around the technology and the AI community. Elon Musk was one of the signatories saying we need to pause the development of AI uh, in order to assess some of these risks. You can see that we can call on all AI uh, developers to stop this immediately. Pause for at least six months. He's asking for the training of AI systems more powerful than GPT-4. I believe that uh, Bill Gates was actually not one of the signatories of those and he has made the case that we do need to keep the development of AI up in the West because otherwise we're going to fall out of the race when it comes to competing with China. And obviously there could be risks involved with that. Yeah, right now, <clears throat> the, the West and particularly certain large Western tech companies, I think have a lead. Uh, things are quite competitive in this space. Um, also in terms of building the computer hardware, um, uh, that is needed to run these large AI models. Um, the key producers of that are in, in the United States, in Taiwan, and in South Korea. Um, and recent export uh, regulations have tried to stymie the uh, sales of uh, AI chips into China. So that might make it harder uh, for Chinese developers to, uh, to keep up with the cutting edge. I think ultimately, machine superintelligence should be developed. I, I do think during the key parts of the transition, though, it would be wise to be able to do it carefully and not to have a sort of hyper competitive situation where there are 20 different companies that are each vying to get there first. And the, whoever decides to make some extra precautions or to check their systems extra carefully just immediately falls behind. And the race is won by whoever is willing to take most risks. I think that would be a bad situation. So having some ability to coordinate, uh, maybe yeah. to slow down for a few months, I think that could be a positive. Yeah, ideally you'd want it to happen in, in concert, but of course in the real world, companies compete and countries compete. And this idea of having one of the most consequential technological impacts on earth, as you, as you sort of laid out at the beginning of our conversation, just how severe it could be. And all these decisions being made by a small handful of tech companies, private companies, don't regular people deserve a say in this? Yeah, I think the development of, of machine Superintelligence is really an issue, not just for one company or even one country. It's an issue for for all of humanity. We we are all in this boat together. Like if it goes badly, <laughs> we are all doomed. And if it goes well, I think we should all uh, you know have a slice uh, of the upside as well. And so I think this conversation will need to, and I think it will broaden out. Policymakers are getting a lot more interested. I think people as they start to get firsthand experience using these systems and seeing how they get better so quickly. I, th I think that that will focus a lot of attention on this over the coming months and uh, years. I, I, I think you're right in saying that everyone's sort of experimenting now. A lot of people know what chat GPT is. They're starting to see the power of this. Hopefully, we'll find a way for us not all to be doomed. Uh, Nick Bostrom, Director of the Future of Humanity Institute, thanks so much for joining us this evening. Thank you.